I wanted to show you this. The head. You can put in with that there. The head. See that? I had to file this off with the mill file to get that nut to turn in there. See that? It's so close I had to file it. And it's kind of sloppy. I could have like made it all nice and trim. But I just filed it just enough over there so that this nut will turn down flat on the here. See? Then I replaced it with the uh, Genuine Honda. See, this is the Harbor Freight head. See the way those valves are concave? They really are cheaper. When you take them out, you feel them yourself. And these only cost like under 10 bucks a piece. Then I put this racing um, spark plug in it. And then uh, I started putting it together, right? But they kind of made a mistake here putting it together. Stuff didn't look right. So, yeah, it didn't look right. So I had to take it all apart again like we're doing now. See? Take it all apart. And because these are racing retainers and sp split um, collars there. See them? They're the kind they use an automobile. See, the Harbor Freight uses this type of retainer. And then right over here, see that? You slide them off this way here. I can show you. You can do it by hand, see? Just push them in like that, and they come right out. Look. Nothing to it. So that's what they look like, see? They're junk. They can actually fly off. So, I'll just put that aside. I have a box of junk over here, I'm saving. Now, what we did was, we was looking at these directions here. And by the way, you want to look at this. This is your Harbor Freight catalog right here. So you go to page two, and you'll see the compression ratio is 8.5 to 1. So you could increase that up to 10, and you'll still be all right with this crappy gas we got in America. But here's what I was doing. I was looking at this. See? And I noticed that that piece is missing. What they call it is the rotary. What you call the... Re these tappet caps. This one over here is the stock one. And that goes on the exhaust because the exhaust valve will not spin. And not only that, because of those crummy retainers, it will actually fall down through there if it doesn't turn. So I found out with these retainers, you have to use two of these lash caps. Yeah, that's why I got three, because I lose them. Yeah, you have to use on the intake and the exhaust. What we've done is there's supposed to be a seal. See, that I forgot to stick in the engine. This is off the Harbor Freight. Because I looked at the directions here and I go, whoa, what's going on here? And it's, so I bought a whole bunch of them, look. They're like a dollar, two bucks a piece. So I just got enough of them because you're going to stick one in on every engine. 
you want to watch this because it's really good stuff if you're doing this assembly one what I did was I actually pushed down on there like this see pushed down on there with like a tool and I put my finger in here and you could have just like you know slipped right off and dug right into your finger very dangerous so I took one of these C clamps, four inch, that I got at Harbor Freight for like two fifty each, and then I welded this on, which is a half inch nipple. See, and I looked there, and I know I didn't copy off anybody, but I looked again, and the more expensive ones like this, these are overhead valve spring tool. I saw the real expensive one and they don't have this type. It's the overhead completely, which is probably better if you get the one at AutoZone for $19.95. It's probably better because you don't have to take the engine apart, see? What I've done was I put this on the bottom of the valve, see? Like that, see? See what I did? It's on the bottom of the valve. And then I just tighten it up. And yeah, it's working. Yeah, see? Now I could probably just dump them out right on the counter. See, there they are. No hurting myself at all. And now I can take it off. So yeah, it, it's to me, that's what I like about this. It's all self-attainment. Everything I do, it's like I learn for myself. I made a mistake. I fixed it. Well, not yet, but we're fixing it now. And see, that one I put some red dye on it because it's used. And here's the new bag. Yep, before I stick it in there, I'm putting some WD-40 on it because it'll lubricate it going down on there. That only goes on the intake. You don't put one on the exhaust. I think because the exhaust is... Yeah, see? The exhaust is really hot and it wouldn't matter. But you have to put this lash cap on the exhaust side. But it's not going to work on this kind of model because it sticks up too high on the lash cap. I mean on the retainer. In other words, it's pushing down on the retainer, not on the valve. That's why these are so much smaller. Let me show you that again so you can see. See how much smaller they are? The high performance lash caps that are seven bucks a piece. <laughs> and these are like a dollar twenty-nine. Yeah. So now we can put the spring back in. Like that. You yeah, see that right in there? It says the uh, TG. That's a TG1 head. Right there it says it. See it? TG1. Okay. I, I like my valve spring compressor really, so I don't know why I'd want to go buy another one. That's the first time I used it now. And why did I paint it red? Because it's a proprietary tool to my do the bug, which is just the vehicle for this fun that I'm doing. I'm having fun doing this. I really am. Now we'll tighten that up on this valve again. Alright, what I got was like a non-magnetized screwdriver, see, and I put some magnets on it. So when I release the magnet, watch that drop. It's already magnetized. Though. There it fell. See, it fell. <laughs> So you just put that one there again. It's pretty long to get back in there.
pull the magnet off. Fortunately, it's magnetized. So then we'll push it down with another one. See? Ha ha! This here's a uh, one of those um, Nagats toolkit. So then we'll do it again. See, now it's magnetized already. Yep. Oh yeah, look at that. Went right in there. And I didn't even hurt myself that time, or even close to it, you know? Now we'll loosen it up. Uh-oh, now that's the magnet there. Make sure you don't scratch the mill face here on the head or the gasket's going to leak because these gaskets are prone to leak. So there it is, the seal's in there. Heck yeah! With my creative magnetic screwdriver wrench. It's really remarkable how this works. Watch. See them pins that come out? Ain't that neat? But anyway, uh, this was the kill switch right here, see? So you need to cover up that hole with the kill switch. When I found that it works, it's like the, I got the, like at the junkyard, like this thing off a of Nissan a hard body. Looks like it fits right in there, don't it? I don't know what it's for, but it had mud on it, so it must have been some kind of outside product. And there you go, look at that. See? That's what you want, nice and clean there. Even matches the rest of the color. So, we'll get done with that. But yeah, if you don't want to make one of these, you can get the other kind that works from the top and you don't have to take the head off. You can do it right from the outside. But just remember that you got to put retainers, I mean these lash caps, on both of these. So you need two lash caps. Because I already looked, it doesn't hit when you don't put them down in there because they're, it won't hit the intake, you know. So you do. You can see that the intake valve does sit up higher than the exhaust. So that's why they don't want you to put. But now when you put this lash cap on there, see, it's just too big. It's hitting the retainer. I don't know if that's good or bad. But there's a hole in it there for a reason. I don't think it's supposed to hit the retainer. Mm -hmm. So. And these here are chromoly push rods. So I was just putting that in there to see if everything lines up and it does. So like I said, we're only running 8.5 the one compression ratio, which isn't too good, you know. But then again, it is good, because see, this is from a high compression engine. See how it's leaking? That's not good. That's my job now. I'm going to bolt these together. And I hope you liked my video. I hope I helped you out there. Just make sure you use these products right here. Assembly lube. And you're definitely going to need something like this, an overhead valve compressor, overhead valve spring compressor. Just look on Google, overhead valve tool, and you'll see, they'll all come up then.